Have you ever stood on a cliff's edge, staring down into the abyss below with your pulse pounding loudly in your chest? That feeling, my dear friends, is fear. It's real, it's raw, and it can stop us cold. But what if I told you that you are capable of facing that fear head on and even overcoming it? To use it to your advantage so that you overcome your greatest obstacles and rise beyond it. Within the parameters of this presentation, you will learn about exactly this kind of game-changing opportunity. By the time it's over, you'll have learned not just the complex nature of fear, but also how to control it using realistic, stoic techniques, which will change your life in ways you never would have imagined. From the neglected philosophies of stoicism, moving off the beaten track, join us as we take a tour along some of the less traveled lanes of stoicism. Apart from notable personalities such as Seneca and Marcus Aurelius, there were numerous Stoic thinkers whose ideas have been marginalized despite their significant significance, particularly in the current effort to comprehend and control anxiety. Think about Muse, or Sonia's Rufus, the Roman Socrates as some call him. As an advisor to Epictetus, Rufus advanced the idea that philosophy is more than just a means of knowledge and may be used to live a moral life. He emphasized the need of overcoming adversity as a way to strengthen one's character rather than as a passive acceptance. According to Rufus, true bravery is the ability to face fear head-on with resiliency and a distinct goal rather than the mere absence of dread. This viewpoint is critical to our discussion of fear because it emphasizes that the goal should not be to eradicate fear but rather to recognize its function in strengthening moral toughness and moral resilience. Hierogles, a lesser-known Stoic, is the next. He developed the idea of oikos, which means familiarization or adoption. This idea is about progressively extending our sphere of care beyond ourselves to include our family, friends, community, and eventually the whole human race. According to Hierogles, widening this circle promotes a feeling of cohesion and belonging, which helps people overcome their worries. Our personal anxieties often fade in the light of group power and purpose when they are tied to the welfare of others. These stoic thinkers provide us a wealth of knowledge on how to deal with anxiety. Their ideas beg us to see fear not as an isolated struggle, but as a common human emotion that can be relieved by moral behavior and group resilience. This viewpoint goes beyond personal development to include the evolution of society as a whole, strengthening our capacity to face and overcome fear as a group. Remember that these lessons are more than just historical tales. They include timeless knowledge that may be used in even the most modern of situations. They provide us with the means to negotiate the complexities of dread in our daily lives. As we go ahead, let's continue to apply these findings and consider how these antiquated concepts may be modified to meet the needs of the contemporary world. Let's now examine fear's fundamentals from a stoic perspective dissecting it to understand its subtleties. Born in the Greek crucible, Stoicism tells us that fear is more than just an emotion. It's a response to our perception of a danger. Here, the word perceived is crucial. This suggests that fear is really a creation of our own brains. The Stoics teach that we may gain control over our ideas by realizing their nature and how they give birth to various emotions, including dread. It's like being the captain of your own ship on a rough sea. Sure, the waves could swell to frightening heights, but you can still control the course. Let us now explore the first method of overcoming fear that the Stoics advocated. They support the exercise of premeditation malorum, which is a serious consideration of possible difficulties. Even while this seems difficult, all that really involves is mentally practicing the worst case situations. Imagine the exact thing that makes you feel the most afraid. Let that fear to enter your mind. And then, calmly and logically, start breaking it down. Which result is the worst? To what extent is it likely? And should it come to pass? How might you lessen its impact or learn from it? This practice tries to demystify the mysterious aspects that often intensify our worries rather than being an indulgence in negativity. Fear is essentially the result of ignorance. We begin the process of lessening its power over us by facing it head-on in the depths of our thoughts. The Stoics did not advocate for the total destruction of feelings. 
Rather, they promoted emotional intelligence and self-control as a means of leading a more satisfying life. Remember this principle as we go through these tactics. Fear is not your enemy. Fear is a signal, and like all signals, it can be controlled and used to your advantage. As we go forward, we will examine some of the neglected voices of Stoicism and how their unique viewpoints might support our efforts to overcome fear. Now let's explore the idea of Appalachia, which is often misinterpreted in Stoic thought. Despite what is often believed, indifference is not the same as being emotionless. Rather, it is a condition of peace and calmness attained by control over unreasonable emotions, dread being among them. The key is to achieve a balanced mental state in which emotions are allowed to coexist without taking precedence over reason. It is crucial to understand indifference if we are to overcome fear. It teaches us that the goal is to keep fear from taking precedence over our sound judgment rather than to completely erase it. In order to face life's uncertainties and worries with poise and a stable mind, this stoic virtue encourages us to develop inner serenity and clarity. Apathy is essentially the ability to identify our anxieties, comprehend them, and go through them in a way that is logical, beautiful, and wise. Therefore, apathy is about controlling and balancing emotions rather than repressing them. It invites us to see our worries as normal human reactions that, when skillfully handled, may result in increased understanding and inner serenity rather than as enemies. This stoic idea teaches how to maintain inner peace in the face of turmoil outside, which makes it easier to respond to life's obstacles, including fears, with calm and careful consideration. We may learn to tell what is out of our control and what is by practicing indifference. This discernment enables us to concentrate our efforts on how we react and behave toward the things that make us feel afraid. Developing this virtue gives us a powerful weapon to face our worries and change how we respond to them, rather than trying to control the unpredictable. It connects the domains of modern mindfulness with stoic philosophy, fostering an inner feeling of serenity and resilience that helps us navigate life's turbulent path. Never forget that your involvement and active engagement are what move this community forward. If you find these thoughts insightful, please show your support by like and subscribing. Most essential, leave a comment below with your ideas and experiences. Together, let's tackle not only our concerns, but also the strategies we use to face them. For the sake of our community and for your own advantage, let your voice serve as a light. We now focus on the idea of the Stoic Rebel as we continue our investigation of Stoicism and terror. This thought is centered on the idea that in order to completely overcome fear, one periodically has to defy expectations and pave a different route. This chapter challenges our worries and the traditional ways of facing them, encouraging us to embrace the rebellious spirit inside Stoicism. It takes courage to challenge conventions, even those found in Stoicism, to be a Stoic rebel. It entails identifying your truth inside the lessons and modifying them to fit your unique path. For example, a Stoic rebel would go beyond the bounds of temperance, a virtue that conventional Stoicism extols, in order to pursue new paths of personal development and exploration. This might include putting oneself in difficult circumstances on purpose in order to develop resilience and overcome concerns that one had thought were insurmountable. This strategy also necessitates reframing our connection to fear. The Stoic rebel viewpoint urges us to actively confront our concerns rather than seeing them as something to be conquered or repressed. It is believed that fear is an essential part of our personal development, acting as a guide, a teacher, or even a friend as we work toward bettering ourselves. Instead of taking lessons at face value, the stoic rebel utilizes them as a springboard for introspection and growth. By adopting this perspective, we enable ourselves to actively interact with obstacles as well as to withstand them. Fear turns from being a barrier to increased self-awareness and satisfaction to a motivating motivator. By accepting the stoic rebel within of us, we give ourselves access to a world of opportunities where fear no longer has the ability to hold us back and instead acts as a catalyst for development, transformation, and inner revolution. This road is about more than just controlling fear. It's about turning it into a driving force that leads us to a life of bravery 
honesty, and a relentless pursuit of personal perfection. It is crucial to adapt old knowledge to our present surroundings in this age of fast change and uncertainty. This chapter focuses on how applying stoic techniques to modern life may be exceptionally beneficial, particularly when it comes to conquering fear. The discipline of digital stoicism is one such adaption that acknowledges the growing influence of technology in our lives. It may be revolutionary to apply stoic ideals to our digital habits. It's important to be aware of how our encounters with technology affect our feelings, particularly dread. For example, we may get more fearful due to the continuous barrage of frightening news. By practicing digital stoicism, we may develop prudent information consumption skills and make sure that our use of technology is consistent with our desire for calm within and reasoned thought. Another contemporary adaption is to apply stoicism to how we handle problems in our careers and at work. Stoic ideas like concentrating on our effort and attitude instead than obsessing about results may be freeing in a society where job uncertainty can be a major cause of worry. This change in viewpoint causes fear to become a driving force rather than a paralyzing one, enabling us to proceed in our professional activities with resilience and purpose. Moreover, combining modern mindfulness techniques with stoicism provides an effective tool for anxiety management. Stoic mindfulness goes beyond mindfulness, emphasizing awareness and acceptance of the present moment to incorporate logical assessment and action. This integration enables us to evaluate our anxieties critically and act on them with reason, in addition to just being aware of them. These contemporary Stoic approaches provide us useful tools to deal with the particular difficulties of the current world. We may develop a creative, applicable, and very powerful kind of resilience by incorporating these ageless ideas into our modern lives. By doing this, we not only better control our worries, but also pave the way for a more contented, balanced existence. As we learn more about Stoicism, we see that it is a philosophy full with contradictions. The acceptance of life's inevitable contrasts is among the most fascinating features of Stoicism. The main topic of this chapter is how these paradoxes may be an effective tool for comprehending and conquering fear. The concept that freedom may be attained by discipline is a fundamental contradiction in Stoicism. The Stoics contend that severe self-discipline really increases freedom, despite the appearance to the contrary. They believe that we might liberate ourselves from the unreasonable cravings and anxieties that often confine us by practicing discipline, especially over our ideas and emotions. With a disciplined attitude to life, we may confront our concerns as chances to practice sound judgment and control rather than as insurmountable roadblocks. Finding strength in vulnerability is another intriguing Stoic contradiction. According to the teachings of the Stoics, facing and embracing our flaws is a source of strength rather than a sign of weakness. We allow ourselves to be receptive to development and learning when we acknowledge and make use of our weaknesses and concerns. By embracing our fears, we may face them head on with bravery and honesty rather than denial or arrogance turning our weaknesses into opportunities for self-actualization. This chapter forces us to reconsider how we handle fear and other obstacles in life. Rather of interpreting things conventionally, we are urged to accept the paradoxical wisdom of Stoicism. This entails realizing that vulnerability is often the source of strength, that self-discipline yields genuine freedom, and that real insight often results from admitting our limits. Accepting these paradoxes gives us a deeper, more sophisticated knowledge of how to deal with the uncertainties in life. It makes way for a journey in which fear serves as a guide rather than a barrier, bringing us closer to resilience, increased self-awareness, and eventually, a more satisfying existence. When we accept these paradoxes, our anxieties might change from being gloomy guides to bright lights. We investigate the more unusual and counterintuitive facets of Stoicism in this chapter, an angle that is sometimes overlooked. Stoicism urges us to examine and challenge the existing quo, including our deeply held ideas and concerns. It is not only about bearing with sufferings and repressing emotions. Take a time to think about the idea of Stoic acceptance. A more opposing perspective contends that Stoicism is not a passive philosophy, but rather one that encourages accepting what we cannot alter. 
It's an active interaction with reality where confronting our concerns opens the door to development on a personal level. This method makes us consider if we're accepting our worries because we think they can't be changed, or whether we're just scared to face and overcome them. The concept of emotional participation is another stoic viewpoint that goes against the grain. A more sophisticated view of stoicism proposes that rather than advocating for control over emotions, we should interact with them, understand them, and then utilize that knowledge to effect change. Instead of trying to stifle dread, one should learn to acknowledge it, comprehend its causes, and then use that knowledge to channel fear into a motivating force for constructive activity. This method of practicing stoicism teaches us to see fear as a challenge to our perceived limits and a motivator for development rather than as a barrier. It involves channeling the energy of our worries into areas of personal development and resilience. By taking this stand, we give ourselves the ability to actively confront life's obstacles rather than merely enduring them. Use our anxieties as a launch pad to achieve unprecedented levels of personal growth. By accepting these unconventional facets of stoicism, we expose ourselves to a wider range of fear reduction techniques, techniques that are more dynamic, participatory, and ultimately more powerful. This viewpoint offers us the bravery to reinterpret and challenge our concerns in addition to facing them head on, transforming our worries from a cause of anxiety into a source of strength and self-awareness. In this last section, we concentrate on combining what we've learned into a comprehensive long-term strategy for applying stoic ideas to fear reduction. This is about making the transition from knowledge to reality, from theory to practice. The goal is to establish a long-lasting framework in our lives where practicing stoicism on a daily basis helps us overcome our concerns rather than simply seeing it as a notion. Establishing a regular practice of reflection, whether it be via writing, meditation, or just silent introspection, is the first step in this integration. Frequent introspection enables us to continuously evaluate and adjust our beliefs and behaviors to better accord with stoic ideals. By seeing patterns in our worries and our reactions to them, this exercise helps us employ stoic knowledge more skillfully. The next thing we must do is develop an attitude of constant learning and adjustment. Fundamentally, Stoicism is about developing fortitude and development in the face of life's many obstacles and anxieties. It is imperative that we modify these lessons to fit our own situation. This might include developing new techniques or changing existing ones to better fit our unique experiences. The activities of mentoring and community involvement are also crucial. Our comprehension and implementation of Stoicism may be greatly improved by exchanging experiences picking up knowledge from others, and helping people who are traveling along similar roads. This social element offers encouragement, a variety of viewpoints, and a feeling of community, all of which are essential for conquering anxieties and attaining personal development. And lastly, dedication is key. Long-term application of stoic ideals demands commitment and tenacity. It's an ongoing process of learning and self-improvement. There will be obstacles and disappointments, but the real spirit of Stoicism is to persevere through them, use our anxieties as stepping stones toward inner calm and insight rather than as barriers. By adopting these practices, we create a foundation of strength, resilience, and knowledge that sustains us for the duration of our lives, rather than merely momentarily overcoming our worries. At that point, Stoicism transcends beyond its philosophical connotations and takes on the form of a way of life a dependable friend that helps us face life's challenges with bravery, dignity, and calm. As we come to an end, it's critical to keep in mind that the Stoic road is an ongoing journey of self-discovery and fear mastery rather than a destination. This is only the beginning of your road toward Stoicism. It's a daily practice. Accept these lessons, try them out in your own life, and see what changes come about. Additionally, Keep in mind that you are not alone as you set out on this route. You live in a society that honors self-control, bravery, and knowledge. As you develop together, share your story and learn from others.